Welcome back everybody to another Motobob video. Now we know all of the major motorcycle releases ahead of the next model year. And so here are my picks of the best new adventure bikes and those that have been updated for 2024. Now we're going in price order ascending as usual. And so naturally we're starting at the more affordable end of the spectrum. And there's no other bike that does that quite so well as the Royal Enfield Himalayan. For 2024, we've got this completely reworked 450 version, which now uses a liquid cooled single cylinder engine. And it's welcome news given that the previous generation was a little bit on the slow side at around 20-ish horsepower. This one is much more competitive up around the 40 mark and so it should represent a fairly significant step up in terms of punch. You've also got a new chassis, upgraded suspension, LED lighting all round and also a new neat looking TFT display. So combined with the new looks and some nice colour options it really does look like the Himalayan which already has a bit of a cult following should be picking up plenty more new fans in 2024. Still, just a grand more will get you the new Honda NX500, which is the new name for what was previously known as the CB500X. Now, this is another great option if you're looking for a modest adventure bike on a budget. And whilst it may not be a hardcore off-roader, it is a decent road bike. And the parallel twin is smooth and revvy and makes about 47 horsepower peak. New for 2024, we've got revised fuel injection settings for a bit better to performance, a new traction control system which will be a nice safety net in those low grip situations and on top of that a TFT display which opens up some connectivity features like turn by turn nav. Plus they've given it a bit of a visual tweak with new LED lighting all round and I particularly like the stacked headlight at the front end which gives it a bit more of a distinctive look whereas the previous gen was a little bit on the generic side. But last up in terms of the sort of more budget options I must point out this brand new 450 the MT from CF Moto. This was probably my favourite bike of the whole show back at EICMA this year because it really does feel like they've been listening to what the adventure bike market has been asking for. We see plenty of complaints in the comments that adventure bikes are becoming too big and too expensive and so you wouldn't realistically ever take them off road. Whereas this looks like a genuinely decent option that's not overpowered and it's not expected to be overpriced either. Everywhere you look on this bike you see off-road friendly features features like the 21 inch front and 18 rear on tubeless spoke rims, decent suspension with plenty of ground clearance, grippy foot pegs with removable rubber inserts, adjustable foot controls and a bolt-on subframe which makes it easier to replace if damaged when dropped. Plus I've got to say it doesn't look half bad either and so I've got to admit I probably wasn't expecting a CF Moto to be high on my list of bikes to demo in the next year but full credit to them this one looks Excellent. Moving up into the more mid-capacity bikes, we've got the new Suzuki V-Strom 800RE. And this basically takes the DE version that they launched previously and makes it much more appropriate for road riding. Now, it gets all of the good stuff that I liked about that bike when I rode it this year. So a brilliant, smooth, torquey parallel twin, decent handling, and also a good tech package with a nicely designed TFT display. But it has to be said, a 21-inch front always feels a little bit vague on the tarmac. And so the 19 incher on this bike and it's got cast wheels as well should be a big improvement. On top of that it also gets lower slung suspension which makes the seat height more manageable and of course ground clearance is less of a concern with this style of bike and then there's also a bit more wind protection from the wider windscreen which is fitted as standard. Now I don't think it looks quite as cool as the DE version but I'm sure that many riders will be willing to forego the rugged aesthetic in favour of an improved ride on the road. Now another good option at this this sort of price point would be the new BMW F800GS, which is effectively the updated version of the F700GS that preceded it. The major update is that it now shares an engine with the F900R road bike and the F900XR crossover sports tourer, although in this particular bike it's slightly detuned to 87 horsepower peak. Still, that's 12 horsepower up on the previous generation 700, and the rest of the spec looks pretty decent too. I think the key thing with this bike though is the 800 150mm seat height as standard, which is generally much lower than most other adventure bikes that you'll see on the market. It's definitely one to consider if you like the idea of an adventure bike, but maybe you're a little bit short in the leg or just generally intimidated by the size of them. And so this is a great way to get a taste of the GS life, but in a much more manageable package. Over to one of the other staples of the adventure bike market though for the past few years, and it's the Yamaha Tenere 700. And while the base model was updated last year, 
year, so there's nothing particularly new for 2024. We do have a few new variations in spec. You see, a few months back, they announced the Extreme Edition, which has longer travel, higher spec suspension that's better suited to hard off-road riding. And then at Eichma, they followed up with the Explorer Edition, which is effectively the opposite. This is more so built for road riding and perhaps some light touring. So it gets a taller windscreen, slightly lower suspension, and therefore slightly lower seat height, a quick shifter fitted as standard, and also the luggage racks thrown in. Higher up the range, you've also still got their Rally model, which is accessorized for off-roading. The World Raid Edition, which has a far bigger fuel tank, as well as the upgraded suspension of the Extreme Edition. And then at the very top of the range, you've got the World Rally, which is similar, but gets some nice extras like the fancy paint job and the Akropovich silencer. All excellent bikes, I'm sure. I really enjoyed both the standard bike and the World Raid when I tried them off-road last year. But the only caveat I'd say with that top spec model is that at £13,000, it does open up a lot of other very accomplished options, as you'll see later on this list. But before we get onto those, I just want to say a massive thanks to our video sponsors today, and that's Manscaped. As a bearded man myself, it's with great joy that I bring you Manscaped's first ever beard trimmer. This is the Beard Hedger Pro, and it really is seriously good. It's got a 7,200 RPM motor and titanium coated blades, and so it can cut through those wiry beard hairs absolutely no problem. And also, it's super flexible with this one guard, you've actually got 20 different cutting lengths that you can cycle easily through with the zoom wheel. And so whether you want short stubble or a great big bushy beard, the Beard Hedger Pro has you covered. Plus, they also offer it as part of their awesome Beard Hedger Pro kit, which contains the absolute works for keeping your facial fuzz in fine fettle. So there's beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, a travel case, and some free gifts, including a beard brush and beard comb, plus some precision beard scissors in case you fancy trying your hand at some freehand artistic whisker-based topiary. On top of all that, head to the link down in the description below and use the code MOTOBOB, and you'll also get 20% off, plus free international shipping, which is, it has to be said, a heck of a deal. So do check them out, and once again, a massive thanks to Manscaped for their support. Now, if you fancy something a little more classic looking, then I'd wholeheartedly recommend checking out the Moto Gutsy V85 TT. Clearly, it takes some styling cues from years gone by, and you should also get a bit of old school soul from the engine, which is air-cooled and push rod driven. New for 2024, we've now got three variants. So there's a V85 Strata, which is more street focused with cast aluminium wheels. Then you've got the standard V85 TT again, but this time with new fancy paintwork. And then they've also retained the V85 TT Travel, which is a touch more distance and touring focused and has stuff like heated grips and seats and the luggage. All of them get an updated engine with a bit more power for 2024. There's a new six axis inertial measurement unit that gives you some lean sensitive rider aids. And they've also redesigned the windscreen with five positions for now even better wind protection. Now next up from BMW, we've got the updated F900 GS. And you could see this as a bigger sibling to the F800 GS that we just mentioned. Again, you've got the new engine here, but this one isn't restricted. And so it gets a healthy peak power figure of 105 horses. And generally, it seems like the idea of this bike was to make it more off-road friendly. So they've slimmed down the whole back end and they've shed a bit of weight and also put a lot more focus on the standing riding position. As a byproduct though, I think I have to say that it's a lot better looking than the previous gen with a much meaner stance to it. So let's hope it's just as good to ride as it now looks. And I'm a particular fan of the new Sao Paulo yellow paint job, which is super punchy and bright. It's also worth mentioning that the more distance focused F900 GS Adventure, the one that gets the bigger fuel tank, also got the same engine update for 2024, but otherwise it's largely the same as its previous gen, and so it doesn't benefit from anything like the weight savings. Now, one of my favorite adventure bikes on the market was already the Triumph Tiger 900, but this year it's had some really nice little tweaks that should make it even better. Firstly, they've given the engine a bit more top end, so it moves from 94 horsepower on the previous gen up to 106. There's a new visual design as well, so it's got new bodywork and some great color options. And then they've also added to the tech with some neat safety features like the new position lights and emergency brake light feature. But I think the most significant update might be the fact that they've now rubber mounted the handlebars. You see the T-plane crank in this inline triple engine does get a little bit vibey when you reach 70 miles an hour and above. And so long 
stints on the motorway can become a little bit irritating, but this simple change ought to help address that issue. And in my experience, rubber mounted bars do very little to affect the sharpness of the handling. Now over to Honda and we've got the Africa twins, both with some meaningful updates for 2024. And we'll start with the base model, which now gets tubular spoke rims, along with the option to spec it up with their electronically adjustable semi-active suspension system. Visually, it's tweaked a little bit as well for a slightly sharper look, but I think it's that wheel change and the option to spec up the suspension that should mean it's a bit more of an all-rounder and a little bit less fully off-road focused. Now, the Adventure Sports, on the other hand, has always been more road and touring biased, as you can tell from the larger fuel tank and the increased wind protection. And so it seems for 2024 that they've leaned even further into that image with a new 19-inch front wheel as opposed to the 21 of the previous generation that should help to sharpen up the road handling. Then you've also got a little less travel in the suspension, which lowers the seat height. And that should be especially meaningful if you've got the bike loaded up with a passenger and luggage where low speed maneuvers on a tall bike can become a little sketchy. The downside seems to be that in the UK, at least, the Adventure Sports is now only available with a DCT gearbox and the electronic suspension spec'd up. And so it now starts at over £17,000. But then again, given the base model has a little bit more all round ability now, you could argue it plugs that gap in terms of the lower price points. Now, this next one was a bit of a surprise back at Eichma, one that I totally wasn't expecting, and that's the new X-Cape 1200 from Moto Marini. You see, we rode the 650 version a year or so back, and it's a decent, budget-friendly middleweight option, but this one looks a lot more serious with a big 1200 V-twin that makes, they claim, somewhere around the 125 horsepower mark, which sounds pretty healthy. Componentry looks premium with an upside down fork, Brembo style lemma brakes, and a big seven inch TFT display. And while it doesn't look like it's gonna be a particularly aggressive off-roader, this could be a really nice option for some adventure touring. The same could be said for the new Moto Guzzi V100 Stelvia as well. This looks like it's gonna make for a really nice tall tourer with the same liquid cooled V-twin as the V100 Mandelo Sports Tourer. It's a really nice engine with some nice torque to it and a great sound. And so I think it should fit this style of adventure bike very nicely as well. Standout points of the Stelvio for me are the shaft drive, which of course adds a little bit of practicality. The styling, which is every bit as good as you'd expect to see from Gutsy. And also the tech with front and rear facing radars that open up some more advanced rider raids like active cruise control. So all around, this looks like it should make for a very nice bike indeed. Thing is, it's always going to be difficult to get sales away from not just the most established adventure bike on the market, but in many countries, the best selling motorcycle overall. It is, of course, the BMW R1300GS. And in this update for the new model year, it looks like they could have made it substantially better. The engine has had a massive overhaul with more peak power, but also they've managed to shed weight, not just here, but on pretty much the rest of the entire bike. Some of the big changes like the steel trellis frame moving over to aluminium will have helped. And they've also reworked the suspension, including a new adaptive height feature, which helps to get your feet down at a stop and also plenty of new tech with front and rear radars just like the Moto Guzzi. So as you can imagine, this is absolutely top of our list of bikes to review for 2024. Now things are getting a little bit pricey on this list now because next up we've got the Ducati Desert X Rally which is getting on for almost 20 grand. Now the standard Desert X has been super popular since it launched last year not only for the cool semi-retro inspired looks but also for the excellent chassis that delivers some serious off-road capability. This rally version though aims to take things up another step with longer travel, higher performance suspension that should allow it to take on even more challenging terrain. Naturally, you've got some other tweaks to the spec, like some more protective hardware and also its own dedicated paint job. But really, it's that suspension package that's going to separate it from the standard bike. I will point out, though, one word of warning. It does make it exceptionally tall at 910 millimeters in its standard form, which I think puts it out of reach for a lot of riders. Now, if it's more gentle meandering that tickles your fancy and yet you still like the look of a Ducati, then perhaps consider the new Multistrada V4 SGT. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is still a blisteringly quick bike. It makes 170 horsepower from its fantastic V4 Gran Turismo engine, but this particular GT version gets all the bells and whistles, including luggage, heated bits, radars front and rear, to ensure that you can cover distance in as much comfort as possible.
cool. Now I've already ridden this one on the launch a few months back and I was massively impressed, although you would perhaps expect so at £23,595. Still not quite top of the list though and that honour goes to MV Augusta with their new 9.5 adventure bike. Now while the price hasn't been fully announced yet, it looks like it's going to be in the region of €30,000, which equates approximately to £26,000. Worth it? Well, it would have to be really rather good to be so. But fortunately, we've got a full walk around that I shot earlier this year at Eichmer, and so you can check out all of the details yourself and make your own mind up. Do give it a click and also let us know in the comments below which bike from this list today you'd choose if money was no object. Hit subscribe if you're not already to see more of the latest motorcycle news like this right here on YouTube. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.